All right, guys. Um, again, uh, this is the fourth day of this lesson uh, on cube roots, perfect uh, squares and perfect cubes, square roots and cube roots. All right. So today we're going to be working out of your book on page, I believe it's 20, page 20 in your book. All right. And I hope you can see this well enough. Um, the thing is, we're going to be going kind of quick because we do have a time limit that we can use on YouTube. So uh, you can always stop the video and rewind it if you need to go over something again. But again, we're talking about perfect squares and perfect cubes. So let's go over the definition again. What makes a perfect square is a, a number that when you take the square root, you get an integer. Right? An integer being uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, uh, negative 4, as long as it's not a fraction. Right? And a perfect cube is the same thing, but a perfect cube means that a number that is multiplied its root, the, the root of a perfect cube is a number that's multiplied by itself and then by itself again. Right? So the only difference between the two is that for a perfect cube, you multiply the value one more time. All right, so let's talk about where we are right now. Uh, we have, this is the example. It says an object is dropped from a tower and falls freely toward the ground. The distance in feet that the object falls in t seconds is given by the equation d over 16 is equal to t squared. What we need to do is find out how long it takes the object to fall 64 feet. So let's take a look at how we can solve this problem, and you should be able to follow along in your instruction book. All right? Well, first, we know the given equation is d over 16 is equal to t squared. So because we're looking to see how long it takes it to fall 64 feet, we're going to substitute that 64 feet for D, because D stands for distance, and 64 is how far we want to know how, how far it falls. So we get 64 over 16, because that's part of our formula. Then we can simplify 64 over 16, and we get 4, right? And 4 is equal to T squared. Because t represents time, it's always positive, right? So time is positive. So we're not going to have a negative answer in this question, even though the square root, uh, square root problem can have a negative answer. In this question, we won't, right? So we take the square root of 4 and the square root of t squared, and we know that the square root of t squared is always equal to t, and that's by definition. That's one of the rules of exponents, right? So we take the positive square root of both sides and we get 4 is equal to, uh, t is equal to 2. The square root of 4 is 2. All right. Now, if you have a question about that, hold up your hand and ask the, the sub if you can talk to your team. And I'm sure she'll let you. All right. So it takes two seconds for the object to fall 64 feet. All right. Let's go to the next question. So it says the area on top on the top face of a cube, the area on the top face of the cube is nine square meters. What is the volume of the cube? And they want you to show your work. So we'll do the work on the board. Remember that we've talked about sometimes we need to work backwards to find an answer. Right? So the first thing we need to know is how long are the sides of the faces of that cube of that uh, cube? All right, well, we know the area of the top face is 9. And we know the area is always in unit squared, right? So we have area. Area is equal to uh, x squared, right? Because it's a square, right? So we're going to substitute the area that we were given for area. So we get 9 meters squared is equal to x squared, all right? At this point, we need to take the square root of both sides. So we're gonna do the square root of nine inches squared, right? Equal to the square root of x squared. Now, when we do x, the square root, we don't have to put the two because two is the default uh, for the radical. So we know we're taking the square root 
right, of nine. So what we have now is the square root of three squared equal to the square root of x squared. And remember we said that the square root of x squared is always x, so that part's done for us. And then the square root, if the square root of x squared is always x, then it would make sense that the square root of three squared is three. So their answer is three and it's uh, meters. I put inches for some reason, it's meters. That's three squared meters, and this, this is three, three meters. All right, but we're not done because that's just part of the question. They want to know the volume of the cube. Well, the, the volume formula for a cube is volume is equal to x cubed. The marker doesn't want to write for some reason. Volume is equal to x cubed, right? So I take this value here of three meters and I put it over here. So volume is equal to three meters, right? And it's gonna be cubed, right? So when I do that, I end up with three times three times three. So as volume is equal to three times three times three, which is 27, right? So three times three times three, the volume is equal to 27 meters. And we know volume is always cubed because it's three dimensions. So volume is gonna be cubed. So your answer is gonna be 27 meters cubed. All right, if you have a question on that, Ask the uh, sub to pause the video and you can talk about that at your table also. All right. So next problem is number 18. Let's take a look at number 18. So this is a question you have to think about. The length of each edge of a cube is x centimeters. If x is an integer, why can't the volume of the cube equal 15 centimeters cubed? All right, so I want you to think about that for just a second. All right. Can we write a variable equation to find out that answer? Well, we can. So we know the volume. We know volume is equal to x cubed, right? For a cube. They give us the volume, so that means 15 meters cubed, right? Oh, centimeters. 15 centimeters cubed is equal to x cubed, right? So now I do the same thing. I take the cube root, of 15 centimeters cubed, right? Equal to the cube root of x cubed. Now, is there a number that I can multiply by itself three times and get 15? So think about that for a while. And then let's go look at the chart that we were supposed to have made earlier, where we have our x values, we have our x squared values, and we have our x cubed values, right? And we'll just do one, two, three, four. x squared is one, x cubed is one. x squared is four, when you do two, two cubed is two times two times two, which is eight. 3 squared, right, is 9, and we just did, we know 3 cubed is 27, and then we have 4 squared is 16, and 4 cubed is 64, all right? Look on this list of perfect cubes, 1, 8, 27, and 64, it's 15 on that list. And it's not. So 15, the, the cube root of 15 is not going to be a perp, an, an integer, right? So your answer to this is uh, 
you need to put an answer that uh, it cannot be the, the volume of a cube, right? The volume of a cube, the volume of a cube, right? I actually to say a perfect cube. Perfect cube cannot be 15 centimeters squared because the side lengths will not be integers. Right, so we can't have that because the side lengths cannot be integers. So we could have a one side length, a two side length, because that will give us eight for a volume. We have three side length, which gives us 27, but something in here. So the length of these sides, if it's 15 centimeters, is going to be somewhere between two and three, but it's going to be a decimal or a fraction, and that's not going to help us in, in what we want to do. So all perfect cubes have integers as side lengths. Let's take a look at number 19. Number 19 says, yesterday there were B milligrams of bacteria in a lab experiment, all right? Yesterday there were B milligrams of bacteria in a lab experiment. Then today there are B squared milligrams. B squared milligrams. All right. If there are 400 milligrams today, how many milligrams were there for yesterday? So what we have to do is find out what the square root of 400 milligrams is. All right. So how can we do that? We do the same thing. We say B squared. We say uh, B squared. B squared equals 400 milligrams. All right, we take the square root of b squared equal to the square root of 400 milligrams, All right? Well, we know the square root of b squared is going to be equal to the square root of 20 squared, All right? Because 20 times 20 is 200. And I know, uh, 400. And I know that when we talked about doing that chart, it said in the book to go up to 15. I told you it'd probably be a better idea to go up to 25. This is one of the reasons why, because we're going to see 20 and 25 a lot. We we work with uh, 400, 625, uh, 1,000, and those numbers are uh, a little bit bigger than the 15 squared. So we need to we need to go ahead and extend our chart out. But we know the square root of b squared is just b, and the square root of 20 squared is going to be 20. Okay? So the answer would be a 20 milligrams. Alright? But Ava chose B. Ava chose B as the correct answer. How did she get that answer? What did Ava do that is a common mistake for a lot of students, right? They, Ava looked at this problem and said, well, all I have to do is divide by two. And remember what we told you, when you divide by two, 400 divided by two means that there are two groups, right? Two groups that are going to equal to 400. And those two groups would be 200, right? And it would be two. There would be two of them. So it would be two groups that are 200. All right? That's division. The square root is not division. The square root is a number that's going to multiply by itself that's going to give us 200, 400. And in this case, it's 20 times 20. If you do that, you get 0, then you get 0, and then you get 4. All right? So remember, square root means it has to be something multiplied by itself twice to, be, to give you the answer. And division, you just need two groups that are going to make it 
to that same thing. So Ava made a common mistake that a lot of students make, okay? Now, next thing we're gonna do is go into independent practice. On this one, what I would like to happen, I would like the, 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 your substitute teacher, as we look at the problem, I want, get the problem, stop the video, you work on the problem at your desk, and then when you all have an answer, start the video up and check your answer, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Because that's independent practice. Now you can work with your group, so there's no problem with that. Work with your group, okay? All right, so at this time, problem number one, independent practice, is solve these problems. Number one is solve A3 is equal to 64. A cubed is equal to 64. All right, and if you can stop the video, and I'll solve it, and then we'll come back and look at it. All right, so stop the video. And we got A, th A to the third is equal to 64. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the cube root of A to the third and the cube root of 64. We know that the cube root of A to the third is now going to equal the cube root of 4 to the third, all right? Because 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is, third, is 64. So if this equals A, which it does, by rule, again, by rule, the cube of the number cubed will equal that number, then this same rule applies over here. The cube root of 4 cubed is going to be 4. So your answer is going to be 4, all right? So, did everybody get the right answer? All right, good job. All right, now, the next question. Again, we'll ask a question, then I would like you to pause the video and check your answer. All right, which number is a perfect square? Which of these numbers is a perfect square? Is it 8, 18, 200, or 225? Well, again, if you've done that chart, we know, is there any number that we can multiply by itself to get eight? Well, if we look at eight, right? We do two and we do four. And then that becomes two and that becomes two. So eight is not a perfect square, it's a perfect what? Perfect cube, all right? If we do 18, 18, we get two and nine, right? And then we can do nine is three times three. Again, it's not a perfect square, and it's not a perfect cube either, but it does contain a perfect square, but that's not our, our question, is it? Then the next one is 200. 200, all right? We can go two times 100, and then 10 times 10, right? Again, and then this would be, break that down to two times five, and this down to two times five. But you notice it's not a perfect square, right? Because it's not two numbers multiplied by, the, a number multiplied by itself twice to give you an answer. So that leaves 225. 225, all right? Well, 225 is 15 times 15. Okay? And that is our perfect square. So our answer to number two is D. All right, let's go on to number three. Number three, uh, it says the fractions are possible values of X in these given equations, All right? Write the correct fraction inside the box of each equation. Now, Here's the thing that we're going to go over. When I take the square root of a fraction, when I take the square root of a fraction, let's look at A. When I look at A, I got X squared is equal to 4 over 9. All right, so X squared is equal to 4 ninths. Don't be afraid of fractions. 
because again, fractions are just numbers. And I know you guys have heard me say that a lot, but I take the square root of x squared, right? And I take the square root of this entire fraction. But what I do on this is when I take the square root of, fraction, of a fraction, I'm really doing this. I'm taking the square root of x squared equal to the square root of 4 squared, right? Well, actually, 2 squared, I'm sorry. 2 squared over 3 squared. Everybody see that? So what I'm doing is on, when I take the square root of a fraction, I take the square root of the numerator and the denominator. Make sure you understand that. I, make, I take the, the square root of both of these, right? So my answer ends up being x is equal to the square root of 2 squared is 2, and the square root of 3 squared is 3. So my answer ends up being 2 thirds, okay? So now that I've done that, I want you to do the, the other 3, right? Do the other 3 on your own, stop the video, and do these next three on your own and then come back and check and see if you got them right. I'll go ahead and do them on the board so that when you come back, you can check your answers. All right. So welcome back. Here is B. B is equal to X cubed is equal to 27 over 64. And we do this the same way we did the other one. You take the cube root of X cubed equal to the cube root of 27 over 64, right? We know that the cube root of this, the cube root of x cubed is now equal to the cube root of three cubed over four cubed. Again, using the law of exponents that says that three, the cube root of x cubed is x, we can also say the cube root of 3 cubed is 3, and the cube root of 4 cubed is 4, so our answer for b would be 3 fourths. All right, the next one, we have x squared again. We have x squared is equal to 81 over 64. All right, 81 over 64. So again, I take the square root of x squared equal to the square root of 81 over 64. Break it down again, the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of 9 squared over 8 squared, okay? Using the rule, I get x is equal to 3, right, over 2 or one and a half, all right? But three over two is probably what they have up top. I can't see it right now. All right, any questions on that one? And the last one is x cubed. x cubed is equal to one, uh, one over eight, all right? This one's a little bit tricky if you're not careful, all right? Because we still do the same thing. We do the cube root of x cubed is equal to the cube root of uh, the cube root of one cubed and eight. Yeah, one cubed and eight, right? Cube root of one over eight, I'm sorry. All right, now we break the, these down and we take the cube root of this, we get X equal. The cube root of one is one cubed, right? The cube root of 8 is 2 cubed, right? Break that down. Now we take the cube root, we get x is equal to the cube root of 1 cubed is just going to be 1, and the cube root of 2 cubed is just going to be 2. So your answer for the last one would be x is equal to 1 half. All right, I believe that's the last one. Let me check. Let me check. All right. Nope. We got this other next page. We got 4 and 5. All right. We're supposed to use the number line. Use the number shown to make two equations true. Use the number shown to make two equations true. All right? 
So are we going to use all the numbers? No. All right, so I want you to look at what we got. I'll write the equation on the board, and then we'll stop the video, and you'll try to figure it out, and then you'll come back. So I have the square root of a number is equal to a number, All right? And I have the cube root of a number is equal to a number. So what we're doing is out of the numbers that we have, 3, 6, 10, 36, 1,000, and 1 million, we are looking for true statements, all right? So for the square root, we know that number is not really going to probably be that big, all right? We can look at these other numbers, 100 squared, right? What is that? That's 10,000, right? 10,000, right? So we know that's not going to be one of our answers. 3 squared is 9, so that's not going to be one of our answers. 3 cubed is 27, that's not there. So what we have, we have 36, and the square root of 36 is equal to 6. This is the fun one over here. We have numbers that are left are 3, 100, 1,000, and 1 million. We know that 1,000 and 100, are, 100 squared is not 1,000, it's 10,000. So that leaves us with 1 million cubed, right? One million, the cube root of 1 million is equal to 1,000, all right? And that, I'm sorry, not 1,000, what am I thinking? 100, because 100 times uh, 100 is 10,000. And then times 100 again is 1 million. You add two zeros, right? So you get 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be 100. So 100 times 100 is 10,000. And then 10,000 times 100 is 1 million. So our answer is 1 million, right? So that leaves us uh, with this, the cube root of 1 million is equal to 100. All right, number five. Number five. Let's take a look at number five. All right. If x is a positive integer, right? If x is a positive integer, is the square root of 1 over x squared greater than, less than, or equal to the cube root of 1 over x cubed? Think about that. Turn off the video. Work this at your table. And I would suggest that you plug values in. Just take a number and plug it in. Right? For instance, let's look at what if we did... What if we did, like, three? What we, no, let's do two. Let's do two. If I have one over, if I have the cube, the square root of one over two squared, is that greater than, less than, or equal to, right, the cube root, of 1 over x cubed, or 1 over 2 cubed, right? So if we put that number in there, if we put that number in there, we can solve this problem, right? So all we got to do is say this, right? What is the square root of 1, right? It's 1. What's the square root of 2 squared? It's 2, right? The square root of 2 squared is 2. We do the same thing over here. Put our box, we say, what's the cube root of 1? What's the cube root of 1? It's 1. What's the cube root of 2 cubed? What's the 2 root of 2 cubed? 2 root of 2 cubed is going to be 2. So that tells us that the square root of 1 over 2 squared is actually equal to the cube root of 1 over 2 cubed, all right? 
Any questions on that? Uh, talk to me tomorrow before we take the quiz, right? And I'll, we'll go over it again, make sure. And that brings us to the last question. Describe how you can use inverse operations to solve this equation, the square root of x equals 4. Okay? How can we use inverse operations to find the square root of x equals 4? Well, we know, we know that square root and square are inverse operations. Right? Therefore, we can square both sides of the equation to solve for x. Okay? So let's do that. We have the square root of x, right, equal 4. If I square the square root of x, and I square 4, right? Well, I know that the square root of x is x, but that's because that's another rule of exponents. The square root of x is x, and the square root of 4 is 16. So I can use inverse operations because, because uh, square root and square are inverse operations, just like addition and subtraction are inverse, just like multiplication and, and division are inverse, right? Square and square root, cube and cube root are inverse operations. So if we're trying to solve one, we just do the other to undo it. All right, so that's everything, right? You have homework is page 19 and 20. Homework, just so you don't think I remember, and so you won't say you didn't hear it, homework is page 19 and 20. All right? It's also written on the board over there. All right? Hope you guys have a good day. Hope you uh, treated your sub professionally and nicely, and I will see you tomorrow. All right? You guys have a good day.